Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about atoms and the periodic table. Okay, so let's first start with talking about the structure of an atom. So an atom is made up of protons, which have a positive charge, neutrons, which have no charge, and electrons, which have a negative charge. The protons and neutrons are in the nucleus of an atom, and the electrons orbit that nucleus. Okay, so when we look at the periodic table, the periodic table is ordered based on an element's atomic number. The atomic number is equal to how many protons something has. So the atomic number is equal to the amount of protons. The amount of protons is going to determine which element you are. Not the amount of electrons, not the amount of neutrons, but the amount of protons. So looking over here at our periodic table, if we look at oxygen over here, it has an atomic number of eight. We see that little number eight there. That means that oxygen is gonna have eight protons. If we look at nitrogen that comes right before it, it has an atomic number of seven, which means it has seven protons. You cannot have an oxygen that has seven protons because then we would just call it nitrogen. The amount of protons do not change for the name. So oxygen will always have eight protons. Nitrogen will always have seven protons. Carbon will always have six protons. Now, if you are a neutral atom, you're gonna have the same amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Sometimes neutrons and electrons change, and we'll talk about that in a future video when we talk about ions and isotopes. But right now, we're gonna pretend that all of these guys are neutral, which means they have the same amount of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So now that our cursor is over oxygen, let's draw oxygen. And so I'm going to make my protons blue, and I'm gonna make my neutrons red, and I'm going to just cluster all of these guys together. So oxygen has an atomic number of eight, which means it should have eight neutrons and eight protons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight protons, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight neutrons. And these are all clustered together in the nucleus. So now it has eight electrons orbiting around this nucleus. And so I'm going to draw an electron shell around my nucleus. And the first electron shell is capable of holding two electrons. So I'm going to draw one, two electrons. Now, how many more electrons does oxygen have? Well, it has the atomic number of eight, which means it should have eight electrons. I have two in that first shell, which means it must have a second shell. So I'm gonna draw this second shell, and two minus eight means there's six left over. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And so here's my oxygen atom. Now I wanna take a break for a minute just to explain the way that I drew my atom. So whenever you draw a nucleus in the middle and you have your electrons orbiting around this nucleus in these little circles, this is called a Bohr's model. That's because Dr. Bohr discovered them, but it, so it's called a Bohr's model. A Bohr's model is not an accurate model of the way atoms look or how they behave, but it is a very useful way to draw them, especially in biology, because it is a simple way to draw them and for us to help and it helps us understand them. So in this video and in future videos, I'm gonna use the Bohr's model. But know that this isn't the exact, this isn't how atoms behave or how they look. Electrons are not in little rings. Actually, electrons are in a cloud. So they are orbiting around the nucleus in a cloud. But I'm gonna draw these as a Bohr's model to help us. Okay, so let me get rid of this guy. All right, so here is our oxygen. It has eight protons eight neutrons and eight electrons. Now remember that our protons are positive and our electrons are negative. So if this has eight protons and it has eight electrons and neutrons are neutral, that means eight positives, eight negatives, 
that means that this has no charge. It is a neutral atom right now. And so remember, if you add or subtract electrons, you're going to give your atom a charge. And so by subtracting electrons, you'll have more protons giving your atom a positive charge. If you add electrons, which are negative, you'll be making your atom more negative or negative. Okay, so we'll talk about that more when we talk about ions. But let's just look again at our structure of an atom. So looking back at our periodic table, we can see that they're numbered, you know, starting with hydrogen over here, number one, helium over here, number two, lithium three, beryllium four, boron five, carbon six, nitrogen seven, oxygen eight, and so on. So it's based on their number of protons. Now let's talk about the structure of the electron rings in the Bohr's model one more time. So the first shell, the first shell of electrons is able to hold a maximum of two electrons. The second shell is able to hold eight. The third shell is also able to hold eight. And in biology, we're not gonna go any higher than the third shell, so this is good enough. So the first shell holds two, the second shell holds eight, and the third shell holds eight. Now, we can talk about atoms as wanting to have a complete outer shell. So if you only have one electron shell, you want to have two electrons. If you have two electron shells, then you want to have 10 electrons. You want to have eight in that last shell. You want to have two in the first and eight in the last shell. If you have three electron shells, then you're going to want to have 18 electrons total. You're going to want to have two in that first shell, eight in the second shell, and eight in the third shell. Now, this makes you a complete atom. Now we have a group of atoms over here at this last end over here. These are called the noble gases. The noble gases have a complete shell. And because they have a complete shell, they don't interact or react with anyone. They're completely fine on their own. So these are the noble gases. And so if we look at the alkali earth metals here, this first row, these guys all have one electron in their last shell. If we look at the halogens over here, the second to last row, these guys all have seven electrons in their last shell. That means these guys really want one more electron. These alkali earth metals over here, because they have one in their last shell, they're willing to give it away to make themselves complete. And we'll talk more about that again when we talk about our ions. But let's look at our shells one more time. So I'm gonna draw carbon. We look at the periodic table here, we find carbon, which has an atomic number of six. And so I'm just gonna draw a solid nucleus, but let's pretend in that solid nucleus, we are going to have six protons and six neutrons. And now we need six electrons. So the first shell can hold two, one, two. And because six is more than two, we're gonna have a, another electron shell. And so six minus two is four, which means there's gonna be four more floating around this carbon atom. And so if we look at its outer shell, it has four electrons, which means carbon is gonna to want to have four more electrons to be complete. That's a lot of electrons to get. And so because of this, carbon ends up bonding with a lot of other elements. And so this is what helps us be a carbon-based life form because carbon can make four other bonds. And so all atoms, just remember, they're trying to have a complete outer shell. If we look at lithium over here, it's number three. So lithium, we're gonna draw a solid nucleus in the middle, but that would be three protons, three neutrons. And it's gonna have three electrons, so two on its first shell. And we're gonna draw its last shell over here which only has one because it has three total electrons. Now its last shell wants to have eight. Getting seven more electrons is gonna be very difficult. So instead, lithium has a different strategy. Lithium is gonna be willing to give away an electron. So if it gives away an electron, then that means it's gonna have its nucleus that has three protons, three neutrons, and then it'll have two electrons on its outer shell. Now, because it only has one shell, two electrons means it's complete. So this is a complete lithium. But because it gave away one electron, that means it has three protons and two electrons, 
it means that this is a positive ion. And again, we'll talk more about ions later, but I want us to look at the electron shells and make sure that we understand these. Okay, so you wanna have a complete shell. The first shell holds two, the second shell holds eight, and the third shell also holds eight electrons.